Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Andrew Yang and the swirling vortex of fire that the September ABC Houston debate has just become. All right? All right, so one, there's this huge event that just happened yesterday. So yesterday, and this is absolutely fantastic. It's a huge moment of celebration for Andrew Yang, and I'll explain why. All right, so yesterday... The September ABC Houston debate, the third debate for the 2020 U.S. presidential primary Democrat race, right? They slammed the door on all the non-qualifieds, right? Like the, the door to the ark has been sealed, right? And there's only 10, only 10 people qualified for the debate. You can no longer qualify, okay? Uh, if you didn't meet the requirements and the requirements for it were polling and um, and donations, right? And in, and uh, there was a really good article online and they did a, I think it was CNN, they did a breakdown of, did you make the, did you make the, the, the donor requirements? Did you make the, um, the polling requirements? Did you make one of those, but not both? Did you make none of those? Did you drop out before? You know, like it was pretty, pretty interesting. So, but this is a really, really big deal because basically uh, the the September ABC Houston debate, right? The qualification for it, it really sets the field at 10, right? All those other candidates, like literally, I think it's like 16, can there's, a, there's 16 other candidates who are now gone, right? If those candidates not make their this debate, they have no chance in heck of moving forward. Uh, here's why. So one, the whole ball game. The whole ball game now is name recognition. And if there's a whole, if there's ten candidates who just got, you know, literally thousands of hours of media coverage, based on on a nationally, uh, an internationally held um, debate that you weren't in, forget it. You're you're just going to fall farther and farther behind, and you're already way behind, right? So there's just no way. For any of these candidates to come back, right? Uh, in addition to that, the money, okay? Like there's just billions of dollars sloshing around in the U.S. Uh, system, you know, f to fund these candidates, and that that money drain is continuing, right? There is just company after company after company waiting in line to hand their gigantic checks to these candidates, right? And that money train has dried up for anybody who missed this debate. It's it's really, you know. So, like, this debate, you know, the slamming of the door on the non-qualifieds, this truly is the, you know, the biblical ark, right? This is the people in the ark who are like, whoo, hey, giraffe, how you doing, buddy? And everybody else like, whoa, is that water? Is it raining? <laughs> right? like, you know, like, it's done, man. Like, it's finished, right? Now, why is this so great for Yang? This is tremendous for Yang. All of us who are in Andrew Yang's camp, we can have a huge celebration today. Uh, you know, basically, I'm a teetotaler, so raise up your uh, Fanta Zero to, to, to Yang, right? And I will toast you because this is really a big deal, right? Uh, basically, we're going to talk about some of the people who dropped out in a minute, who actually did not qualify or dropped out, who are now gone. And I'll tell you right now, even three to six months ago, no one would have expected that Yang was going to beat some of the people that I'll be talking about in a minute. But the fact that Yang is top 10, right? Yang is top 10, right? And get this, he's already qualified for the fourth debate. So he's going to be around for a while. He has incredible momentum. He is doing fantastically. He's doing everything he needs to do. I truly believe he is the sleeper, right? This person who came out of left field that nobody expected, especially Trump. Trump actually made a statement. He's like, I can handle any of these Democrats you put in front of me. The only thing that worries me is somebody coming out of left field. And boy, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, you know, an Asian gentleman talking about UBI being one of the main contenders for the U.S. presidency. No, nobody saw that coming. Like that was not like that is not something people were expecting. Right. And it's exciting. It's incredibly exciting, right? So every Yang fan, all of us in Yang Gang, like it, we can really celebrate. It's really important. This is a huge accomplishment on the part of Yang. The fact that he's in that top 10, 
Uh, he continues to get his message out. And he has more practice with each one of these debates. He has more ability to get his awesome, peerless message, right? I mean, like, think of his message. His message is so clean and pure, right? $1,000 a month for every living adult American. Fantastic. Who doesn't like money? And down with robots, right? Like, you can go hard against robots because they're things. They're the perfect opponent. Everybody can say robot sucks. Everybody can jump on board with that, going hard against that opponent, right? It's brilliant. His platform is absolutely brilliant, and he is getting the momentum he needs to get there, right? I'm so excited, all right? So this is really, really exciting. All right, so let's talk a little bit more. There's so much to unpack here. The, you know, the, uh, the, the biblical ark cutoff, right? The doors are sealed. The 10 are in the ark. All the other candidates are outside with raindrops falling on their head right? It, you know, the flood's coming for them. It's just, wow. Okay. All right. So let's, let's talk you through. All right. So one, what do we have now? One of the things that's so nice is simplicity, right? You and me, we're political wonks, right? We're deep in the pool, right? We are, you know, we are following multiple sources. We're doing our reading. We're listening to our podcasts. We're sitting down and doing analysis. We're making charts, right? Well, that's a political wonk, right? What about the political muggles, right? Well, guess what? The muggles, like the the you know the the the, the normies who like aren't it, as deep into it as us. Like I use that term muggle. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, right? The people who only see the normal world, they don't see the magical world, right? The muggles, they can't deal with 26 candidates. That's how many there were at one point. 26 candidates. 16 are gone, and six and 10 are living. Right? That's that's where we are now. This is fantastic because the muggles can come in the pool now, right? Like the and we are gonna see the muggles showing up, right? Like it's gonna be really fun. Like, you know, you're you know, at your next barbecue, you know, um, Joe's gonna walk over and go, Hey, uh, did you hear about this Yang guy? And you're like, Oh my gosh, I've been following Yang for like ten months, dude. <laughs> like you know, like you know, but you have to put a nice smile on it and be like, you know, pat him on the head and say yeah, let's talk about politics, right? Even though, like, you've forgotten more about politics than they'll ever know, you know, but, but it's good. The muggles can come in because because there's 10 candidates, right? Now, one of the things that's nice about this is it's hard to remember 26, 26 people, but it's easy to remember 10, right? So uh, I'm going to give you some of my ways of breaking these down so you can remember them and you can talk to them equally, right? Because I'm always remapping information in my head using uh, memory palace methods. I'm a big mnemonics tool guy, right? So let's talk this through. All right, so the 10 candidates break up into the fast five and the slow five, okay? The fast five, I don't need to, m to memorize them. They're in my head and they're probably in your head too. All right, so here it goes. This is the fast five. Yang, number one, he is king, man. Like we are, gonna, we are getting there, right? We're, you know, nobody's gonna forget Yang, right? Okay, but then you have Warren and Harris, right? Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, right? Then you have uh, Sanders and Biden, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, right? That's the fast five, okay? Now, why do I call them the fast five? Well, Yang's Yang's king of the world, right? In my, in my opinion, you know, uh, he he gets in there because he's the best, right? Uh, and the only reason that he has he doesn't have the polling numbers yet is because the media is still trying to hold him down. We're gonna get past that problem, right? All right. But, uh, but those four that I just talked about, they have the best numbers. They are performing the best in the polls. So Harris, Warren, Biden, Sanders, these are true threats, right? True threats, right? Uh, and at this point, you know, like, uh, Yag's got to be in there. He's got to be able to hold it, hold his own against any of them, right? Though each one of those is carrying a political dagger, right? Like, actually... Man, Kamala Harris, she's dual-wielding ambidextrous. Two political daggers, right? Like, you cannot sleep on any of them. They are incredibly dangerous, right? That's the fast five. And Yang hangs with them, right? All right, let's talk about the slow five, right? I have a mnemonic now for remembering the slow five. BBC, right? So the BBC is a channel I love. They talk about British people. I uh, love British people. They're really interesting. Um, awesome history. Uh, terrible food. All right. So let's get into it. BBC. There's three Bs and two Cs, right? There is um, Beto, Booker, right, and Buttigieg, right? Three Bs, two Cs. Klobuchar and Castro. Yes, I know Klobuchar starts with a K. 
but it's a hard C sound, so I'm going to call it BBC, right? So Klobuchar and Castro. Let's talk about these people, right? Okay, Buttigieg, Edge, right? Uh, he has had a precipitous fall, man. One of the biggest problems is that he's still mayor and his city has fallen apart. That does not look good. Not a good look, right? Really, that's rough. That is very, very rough, right? Um, Beto, I don't even know why. I don't even know why Beto's there, right? I, honestly, he is the person I am most surprised to see to make top 10. I don't think he matters. He's a complete non-player. And I'm going to say this is really odd. When I look at Beto, I, he looks like there's something wrong with his health to me, right? Purely conjecture, just something I think. Uh, I hate even going there because I know like it shouldn't matter, but the reality is we need a healthy president and there's a lot of attention paid to presidents, right? Because like in the past, we've had presidents that hid major, major um, health issues. I'm not sure if Beto is you know, hiding a health issue. I don't think that's the case, but I think like, I would not be surprised three, four years from now to, to read something that he was struggling with some kind of health issue. The only reason why is before this campaign started, he looked really vibrant. Like he stood tall. And when I see him on camera, he looks kind of pallid and like, almost like something's wrong. I, I don't know. I, I pray that I'm wrong and this is nothing. Right. And I have no, the only proof I have of this, is there's no proof. This is completely my opinion and nothing else. It's just when I see him on camera, he looks really pale. Like, 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 um, kind of like, you know, eat a sandwich. Like, it's, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But anyway, I really think Beto, complete non-contender. I'm, I'm actually amazed he even made it to, to the end. Booker. By the way, Booker, I have an I have an a, a daughter in college, right? She's in her she's going into her third year of college. I'm so proud of her. She's super into fencing, brilliant artist. You know, just I'm so fortunate. I'm so blessed. My children are just a pure joy. My daughter is really really down with Booker. Booker is her candidate, right? She really likes him. She thinks he's awesome, and and so that's made me pay more close attention to him. He's brilliant. He's a great, great candidate. I really like him a lot. He's really smart. He is. Uh, he is. He's got really sound policies, right? I'll tell you what kills him and makes him a non-threat. I do think he's a non-threat, right? He is not a threat to anybody in the Fast Five. Here's why: this president, this this nation has only has only um, elected two bachelors, only twice, only two times in 300 years of history, right? And it did not work out well either time. The first, uh, I think it was Grover Cleveland. Um, he immediately got married. He's like, oh, snap, I better get married. <laughs> right? like, so he barely even qualifies as, as a bachelor. He was elected as a bachelor. He was married within months, right? So even that guy didn't, even the guy who became the bachelor president was like, oh, I got to fix this right away. <laughs> like, so he doesn't count, right? Like, I feel like he doesn't count. The other one was, oh, I can't remember his name now, man. Uh, but he was he was president right before Lincoln. He was a terror. The other only other bachelor president. He was an absolutely terrible bachelor president, right? He voted for Dred, like he he supported Dred Scott and wanted to extend the 1619 problem. I mean, are you kidding me? He was it was a train wreck, right? So the reality is. Booker has to overcome being a bachelor, and frankly, I'm not sure we can do it, right? Like, I'm not sure he could do it, because I, the reality is, I would love, you know, we should be more open and, and be like, anybody could be president. I totally get that, but the reality is, America's like, hey, why didn't you have kids, right? Like, you know, like, and, you know, and if you, there's completely legitimate reasons to not have kids. One of them is like, oh, that's really hard. But if you didn't have kids because that's really hard, uh the presidency is really hard, <laughs> like, you know, so this is a thing, like, you know, there is zero, his zero good history with bachelor presidents, none, none, right, and by the way, let me correct my speech, not bachelor, single, single, right, I'm trying to, I'm really doing what I can to uh, embrace gender inclusive speech, right, uh, th throw in the, you know, let me know in the comments below if I'm missing any of them, or, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to update my, my speech registry and make sure I'm, 
you know, uh, everything I'm saying is equally helpful to men and women and uh, transgender and the, the wide array of, of um, genders and gender expression. Okay. All right. So you got, so, so that's all your B's, right? Klobuchar. I love Klobuchar. She's so exciting. She's one of my favorite candidates. I think she's like really spicy and like, uh, she, uh, she has that Heartland stalwart style. I think she's fantastic. I really, 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 really like Klobuchar. She ain't going nowhere. She ain't a threat to nobody. And the reason why is everything you can get with Klobuchar, you can get with Warren. Right, like Warren, I really feel like Klobuchar is like one. You know, if anybody looks at Klobuchar, they're like, "What am I getting with you that I'm not getting with Warren, who already who already is performing a lot better than you are?" Right, that's the problem there. It's just my just my take on that. All right, uh, and then where else? Uh, oh yeah, Castro, Julian Castro. Right, uh, another person I'm kind of surprised to see make the top ten. Right. Um, actually, I know AOC is a big fan of Julian Castro. Um, I think the issue with Julian Castro is he's, I think he's really interesting. Of course, very smart person. Uh, I think he's charismatic. Uh, I think his charisma is a little low key and that might be a little bit of a problem. Uh, I think he's kind of seen a little bit as like, like one of the less fun candidates. Um, and the reality is I think, I don't think he's doing anything wrong. The problem is he's not doing a lot right, right? Like the issue is nothing he's trying is really getting any traction. There's no grip on what he's doing, right? And that, that's that's the issue. So the slow five, right? Like the slow five, uh, BBC, Beto, Booker, Buttigieg, Klobuchar, and Castro. That's your slow five, right? So, and that's it. You got your fast five, you got your slow five, right? And that's it. We're down to 10 candidates. This is hugely exciting. And Yang is king of them all, man. I'm so excited, right? Like, this is really huge for Yang fans. Like, this is really, really, really a big deal, right? Now, one of the things that's really interesting is, what do you have here with, as far as um, as far as far new entries? So, basically, we've already said 10. That's it. Can anybody else come into the race at this point? It's really, it's really interesting. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if any, if there are any, like, um, if there are any senators, governors, or business people who are like, I want to run for president, people are going to be like, shove off, Piker. You know, we don't need anybody else in the pool. Go like, get out. Like, <laughs> right? That is not going to work. Who can still enter, right? All the way up until March, until the, uh, until we actually start voting in the primaries. California is like one of the first states that will vote. They'll vote in March of 2020. Up until then, any major celebrity can jump in. So Oprah could jump in. Leonardo DiCaprio could jump in. I'm not saying they will jump in. I'm saying if they jumped in, they could be a threat. To, to, certainly to the slow five and perhaps to the fast five. Actually, you know, if Oprah joined, like she'd be a threat to anybody on the ticket, right? Like a, anybody in the race could get knocked out by, by Oprah Winfrey, including Yang. He would have to fight really hard to beat her, right? Because Oprah would be like, just like, you get a chicken in a pot, you get a chicken in a pot, you get a chicken in a pot. You know, like Oprah would be really tough to beat, right? Let's talk about some, let's talk about some of the people who are gone. All right, this is shocking. I'm, I'm so amazed. There's three people that are gone that I am really amazed that they're, that they're gone. And by the way, some of them dropped out, some of them didn't, but the reality is the Houston ABC, uh, the the September ABC Houston debate is the whirling fire vortex that burned off the chaff, right? And so all three of these people are gone because they couldn't make the debate. So let's talk about them. Tulsi, I am shocked that Tulsi is gone, right? Uh, actually, oh, actually, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not shocked because that, that, that Tulsi is gone. I'm actually shocked that nobody has picked her up as VP yet. So Tulsi is out, uh, and, uh, you know, and I, I'm a huge fan of Tulsi. I think she's like, she is an incredibly talented, uh, politician with, with just about the worst platform ever picked, non-interventionism, right? And so, but I will definitely miss her. I really liked, uh, that brilliant white suit in the last debate, but there was like, I did a whole video on just that suit alone, 
it was so smart and like it was literally brilliant right and figuratively brilliant um you know it was it she is a really really powerful candidate and i'll tell you right now somebody's got to pick her up as vp this is really really important i really i'm convinced tulsi tulsi gabbard is worth five to ten points in the general election all right so, so somebody's got she's the only vp the only vp candidate that matters in my opinion right all right, Gillibrand. I am very, very surprised to see Gillibrand out, right? I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm always like, oh, this is this for this reason and this is that. I have no idea why Gillibrand is out. I really don't. I have no idea why Beto or Castro are ahead of uh, of Gillibrand. That, it makes no sense, right? Like, it just, it's shocking. I am incredibly, incredibly surprised to see Gillibrand out. Okay. Let's talk about Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson is gone. I am going to miss her so much, right? I love the idea of, you know, having international um, debate and having a lady talk about crystals and love and uh, and yoga and like um, meditation and like you never knew what she was going to say next. You know, like it was she was super fun and I was hoping she was going to like channel a previous president in one of the debates. Really, I'm really going to miss Marianne Williamson. She was awesome, right? Just super fun candidate. Definitely one of the funnest. What's something else we've now learned because of this triggering event, right? Because of the September ABC Houston debate, right? That's coming up. Well, one of them is if you are fiercely focused, you are going to lose ground, okay? All right, so uh, I'll talk them through. Uh... Swalwell, he was fiercely focused on ordinance, lost ground, was not able to move forward, right? Um, Tulsi Gabbard, non-interventionalism, terrible platform to be fiercely focused on, lost ground, couldn't move forward, right? Uh, Gillibrand, 1973 focus, lost ground, could not move forward, right? Um, Jay Inslee, climate, climate. The media says climate matters and people care about it. They don't. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't move people. It doesn't make people passionate about anything. It's, it's a non-starter. It didn't move Jay Inslee forward an inch. He was the number one climate candidate. He came. He went out very quickly. Right. So the so uh, so candidates have to be very very picky about what they're fiercely focused on. Right. Andrew Yang is fiercely focused on UBI. Everybody can get behind behind it, so everybody having a thousand dollars a month who doesn't like money right it's 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 an awesome thing to be fiercely focused on all of that is my opinion i'd love to hear your opinion what do you think are who are you surprised didn't make the top 10 and what are you going to be drinking to celebrate andrew yang being in the top 10 let me know in the comments below please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium